What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. If this is your first time here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So I did a video a couple weeks ago about whether or not data science is going to die in the next five years. And now I don't think that it will, but I highlighted that one of the key problems is how ambiguous the definition of data science is. Specifically, there's no clear boundaries for what does and does not constitute data science. You've got some people in the statistics community saying that data science is just a fancy made up term for what they've been doing all along. You've got a certain brand who thinks that data scientists are people who know 17 programming languages. The list goes on and on. I concluded that video by saying in the future you might start to see more specialization. You might see more machine learning engineers. You might also see more business analysts. So I thought what better time to address another question which comes up a lot which is what exactly is the difference between a business analyst and a data scientist? So we're going to look at for those two roles what you can generally expect. As a usual disclaimer, this is based on my own experience and research as well as the anecdotes of people in my network. Your career is a super important thing for which you should always do your own research. So take this video to give you some helpful food for thought as well as for entertainment purposes. We're gonna look at the following things. Number one, how do you define these roles and what exactly are they? What are the educational requirements for each of these roles? The thing that everybody cares about and that's money. What does the future look like for each of these roles? And then how exactly should you decide which one you want to get into? Let's start with the definition of a data scientist. Now I did a whole video on what I think a data scientist is, but the TLDR of that, or I guess the TLDW in this case, is a data scientist is somebody who's an expert across four different things. Statistics, programming, domain expertise, and communication skills. And you're going to have some strengths and some weaknesses. In fact, everyone does, but those are the general four skill sets that a data scientist is going to have. Now, depending on who you talk to, you might hear different definitions, but to me, that's what a data scientist is. Business analysts are a little bit more well-defined. So the International Institute of Business Analysis defines a business analyst as an agent of change. They enable change in an enterprise by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. And naturally, because this is the 21st century and we live in an enormously digital era, that's going to be massively driven by data. You will see the term data analyst get floated around a lot too. And in some cases, this term and business analyst are fairly interchangeable, especially with smaller companies, but in the aggregate there is a difference between the two. They are similar but distinct, with data analysts typically having more focus on data and business analysts having more comparative focus on processes and on business. Now let's think about the core skill sets that I mentioned for data scientists. Now I would argue that for business analysts, it's even more important to be really strong with domain expertise and communication skills. Domain expertise should make a ton of sense. I mean, if your job is to be an agent of change for a particular business, but you don't understand the current state of that business or the reason things are the way they are today, you're going to run into a lot of problems. And communication is the same sort of deal, because a big part of your life will involve analyzing data in order to tell compelling stories. But once you go from data to story, you need to know how to actually, well, tell the story. Some statistical foundation is going to be important as well, but it doesn't necessarily need to be crazy or technical. I'd say some helpful things to know would be all about the different types of bias, statistical tests, confidence intervals, the hypothesis testing framework, linear models, basically things like that which aren't super complex, but provide a really good foundation for thinking through problems statistically. Then for programming, that's going to depend a little bit. Now one thing which is going to be super common is SQL, because at the end of the day, you're not going to escape the fact that you need to query your data and get it into a unified form before you can do anything else. 
And for some, your other go-to is gonna be Excel. Now I have a whole video about why I think it's best to use an open source programming language, and that goes for business analytics as well. I personally hate using Excel for any type of analysis that lasts more than a couple minutes. But in all fairness, Excel is all over the business world. It has been for many, many years, and I really don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. So now that we've talked about some definitions for these terms and what exactly they are, let's talk a bit about the requirements for each of these positions from an educational standpoint. Starting with data science, most people getting in this field are gonna have advanced education, and that's probably gonna be in statistics, mathematics, or computer science. And alternatively, universities often have special data science programs now too as well, but from this 2019 Birch Works study, they found that 47% of data scientists have a master's, and another 47% of data scientists have a PhD. So there's no getting around the fact that in data science, education is not everything, but it absolutely does matter. I couldn't find any such study or breakdown for business analysts, but I do think it's pretty fair to assume the overwhelming majority of them will have at least a bachelor's degree, with an increasing percentage of them having a master's degree or even an MBA. But generally, even though we're in a market where the overall demand for higher education is increasing, I do think it's fair to say that the educational requirements for most data scientist roles will be higher than the educational requirement for most business analyst roles. However, there are a number of organizations that provide certifications which are tailored to the individual's interests and specialization, and those can be just as helpful, if not more helpful, than the academic degree itself. Next, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic of all, which is, obviously, money. Data scientist average salaries have been studied a bunch of times, and the findings do vary a little bit each time this is surveyed, but you've got Glassdoor placing the median salary at about 113,000, with the range of that going from 83K to 154K, but then there's average additional cash compensation of about $11,200. But then Indeed found the median base salary to be $124,222. So we don't know exactly, but it is fair to say data scientists make a whole lot of money. As far as business analysts are concerned, there was a global salary survey done by the 2019 International Institute of Business Analysis, and they found that for men, the average was 72,965, and for women, the average was 74,188. Now you get the idea of the general range of each of these two positions. So business analysts are going to have less educational requirement to get their foot in the door, but data scientists do make a bit more money, at least on average. And keep in mind that everything here is based on averages. So these numbers are going to vary based on your location and region, your industry, your years of experience, your certification, and these are very static points which could possibly change in the future. Now here's just a wild prediction that I have about the future of each of these two roles. And I might be wrong, but I have a pretty strong hunch, so take it for what it's worth. I talked about in my video about will data science die in five years, about how a lot of businesses still say they're not data centric, and they're not getting their intended ROI out of their data department. And I made a point that's probably related about some parallel problems that workers are experiencing. They're saying they don't have the support and the infrastructure that they need, and also that the term data science is not well defined, so what you end up with is seriously mismatched expectations, both from the organizations as well as from the workers themselves. So what I think the next few years will bring is a little bit more clarity and definition around the term data science. You're going to see more complex problems being worked on, and you'll have more of things like ML engineers who will build start to finish machine learning pipelines. But then I would also expect problems which don't involve super technical or complex solutions will be handled a little bit more by business analysts. We're a long way away from nuanced business problems just being automated away, 
So if you're a business and the complexity of your problems just doesn't require the technical expertise that a data scientist has, why would you hire one and pay more to have them solve those problems? You could hire a business analyst to help with those problems and you'll end up saving more. So that just seems logical. Of course, if enough businesses were doing this, this would have the economic effect of increasing the demand for business analysts, therefore increasing the price of their labor, aka their salaries. All of this happening while the investment into data and analytics as a whole just increases, thus making both of these positions more important and as a result, more lucrative. So we will see. Data gets generated at enormous rates, and there's certain economic principles that are going to be true the overwhelming majority of the time. Business is always looking for smarter and more cost-efficient ways to utilize their data, and one of such ways would probably be to utilize business analysts more. So what you're gonna see is more demand for that skill set, more competition among employers for that skill set, and thus forcing them to pay more money in order to attract that talent. All this ultimately begs the question about which of these two paths is right for you. Maybe you're in school right now and you're interested in data, you're pursuing a statistics bachelor or something similar, or maybe you work in business analytics right now and you're thinking about making a move over to data science. Now I actually do think for a lot of people outside of Silicon Valley, the end path for both of these two careers will look more similar than you would think because I think what we're gonna see in coming years is a lot more industry experts who can speak technical lingo, but they know their domain really well, and they're working in management, maybe managing teams, and they're not necessarily sitting behind their desk programming all day. So ultimately, it's probably more of a shorter term question, and it comes down to how deep you wanna go into statistics and into the technical aspects of solving complex business problems. Business analysts, on average, are going to spend more of their time with the domain, with processes, with storytelling, with that side of things. Now, all that stuff is very important if you're a data scientist too, but a greater percentage of your world is going to be taken up by those things if you're working as a business analyst. So if you genuinely enjoy that side of things more, or things like business administration and processes just appeal to you more than things like feature engineering or imputing missing data, you're probably going to enjoy life as a business analyst a little bit more. Likewise, if you don't want to pursue a master's, you probably do have a better chance of becoming a successful business analyst than you do a data scientist. There are definitely examples out there of people maybe coming directly out of college from a bachelor's or transitioning from one role to another and becoming a data scientist, but I do have to point out that statistically, those people are the exception rather than the rule. But if you're a person who loves to nerd out on technical stuff like advanced statistical models or new packages in Python or cross-validation of machine learning models, and you also do understand all of that does lose its value if you're missing the business expertise or the ability to communicate about it. And also you have higher education or at least the prospect of getting it doesn't scare you off. Then data science is probably right for you. Overall, these fields are both pretty wonderful and nobody can predict what they're going to look like in 10 years or even 5 years from now. But I think it's pretty clear they're both going to be in extremely high demand, so you truly can't go wrong with either of them. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to support my work, the most helpful thing that you could do would be to share this video. Otherwise, please consider smashing the like button, and then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.